Good morning, guys. It's a beautiful day here in Los Angeles. How did you guys sleep? Cool. Look how cool the architecture is on this house. I love this neighborhood. We came up to go to the park and there's almost no parking, so we had to park a little further away today. And this one is also one of my favorites. I love everything about the way this one's designed. Isn't that great? I don't even know what kind of architecture you'd call that, but just every time I come by that, I'm like, that is spectacular. Well, hello, my friends. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion. Well, I woke up early today, and I went out to buy that wrench attachment that I needed to change the oxygen sensor in my car. As I was driving to AutoZone, I passed by like a little strip mall of auto repair places, so I just swung by there, had 25 bucks in my pocket, and I just started hitting all those, and I just said, hey, can you replace this part for me for 25 bucks? It'll take like 10 minutes. So I found a guy to do it. He did it. Didn't take too long. Um, we reset the battery and he told me he said it's gonna drive a little weird for a little while because it's gonna be like readjusting so it did drive weird immediately but the check engine light hasn't come back on so right now I feel like I might be okay and just any weirdness that I'm feeling uh, might be it just adjusting because when I first started driving it was driving weird and then I got home turned off the car went in and got jaw and when I came back out where I had been idling weird before, now it was idling okay. And when I started driving, it felt perfect, but once I started going up the hill, it started having like weird moments. And that's why I was like, I think that might just be it still settling in. So we'll, we'll see. We're going to the valley today to do a vlog, so we'll see how the drive home goes and uh, maybe we'll have to change our plan for going to the valley. I hope not. I have a really great vlog today on Alan Ladd I'd like to do. Oh, one of his buddies is here. He's happy now. He came over to the water fountain and was standing there waiting for the water to go, but there's nobody to push the button, so. Katie would never do that. So last night I came up with like five new ideas for vlogs. One of them is really good, but I can't figure out the address. I just keep finding places that they mentioned that it was a duplex in Beverly Hills, but I can't find the address. So this has me really pumped because today's vlog is one of those that I kind of stumbled into last night. Always find somebody to give him attention. Always. Oh, that's a spot. Now Alan Ladd's life was really bizarre and kind of interesting because he's not somebody who had a lot of highs. It was a lot of hills and valleys and even at one point he would try and commit suicide by shooting himself in the chest. They never did really find out whether it was an accident or whether it was him trying to or not, but we're going to take the story back to his earlier days. We're going to take it back to around his high school years and when he was graduating from high school. It's a beautiful day out here, and it's pretty much only congested right there at the photo spot that everybody stands at because right behind that, you know, that hill, of course, the Hollywood sign. What are you doing? I caught you. I busted you. Hey! Well, I decided since where we're going is right next to one of the metro train stops, we're just going to take the train over to North Hollywood. Oh, it's a matinee at the Pantages today, so it's pretty busy over here. Ah, the escalators that never work. Well, they do sometimes work, but not usually on the weekends. Somebody usually pushes the button to make them stop on the weekends. I think I still have some money on my card. Yes. 
Now in order to set up some of our story today and just to tell you how rough of a life Alan Ladd really had, I have to take you back to him being four years old. At the age of four his dad died of a heart attack and just a few short months later Alan would accidentally burn down their apartment playing with matches so he and his mother would have to move to Oklahoma City she would eventually be remarried and Alan would pretty much skip school to work odd jobs to make money so that they weren't completely destitute they fought homelessness um, Alan was pretty much raised on potato soup and always looked malnourished most of his life and then the family decided to move to North Hollywood the valley for greener pastures Now Alan was an only child, so he and his mother were extremely close. And even once they moved to North Hollywood, when his stepfather would get a job painting sets on movies, Alan would still go and find odd jobs, working at the Piggly Wiggly, picking fruit, doing various odd jobs to help raise money for the family. Now when the family moved out here, as opposed to Oklahoma City, where Alan wasn't going to school and really had no friends, when they moved here, he actually was attending school and had a lot of friends. In fact, he was the president of his class. And it would be his time in high school that Alan would develop an intense love for track and field and for swimming, and would set his sights on one day competing in the Olympics. Now unfortunately for Alan, he ended up suffering an injury that ended his entire athletic career, any hopes he had of going to the Olympics. So he had to set his sights on something else. Here across the street you can see there's a recreation center, it's a park, there's a pool directly in front of us. And after completing his high school career, Alan started working at the Piggly Wiggly bagging groceries and again, selling fruit, doing anything he could to raise money. And he spent $150 in a small investment that he would go on to tell his family about for the rest of his life. Now right here, where this Chocolata is, is what Alan invested his money in. In 1934, he spent $150 and he got the rights to open a hamburger stand here and he called it Tiny's Patio. Tiny was the nickname that he had growing up, which has always been a surprise to people that he would name this place Tiny's Patio when he hated that nickname. He hated that he was 5'7 and was always considered malnourished or, or scrawny. But he would go on to run this hamburger stand for a few years. In fact, while he worked here, he had a crew and he, um, he would also get a job as a grip working at Universal Studios. Now during that time, he would watch the actors work from up in the rafters and he would say, someday I'm gonna do that. And so he took a little bit of the money he was making off of this place, he enrolled in acting classes and through there, developed this, this love for, for acting and started doing um, auditioning and got a short term contract, a six month contract with Universal at the same time that they had given Tyrone Power a contract. Now at the end of that six months they decided not to renew it and Alan was back to looking for jobs and working here again. Now shortly after his time out of school that he would meet a girl named Midge that he would fall in love with and they would secretly go off and get married because Alan just didn't have enough money to support her so they went got married and then when they came back she went and continued to live with her parents and he lived in the small place that he was living in until they had to come clean when she became pregnant with Alan Jr. Now once Alan Jr. was born he had to you know, take responsibility and he got a small apartment and he moved Midge, Alan Jr. and his mom into this place. And the reason I pointed out this uh, athletic center and this park recreation center across the street is because Alan was once a lifeguard over at that pool when he was in high school. Now here was the situation. Unfortunately, uh, Alan's career wasn't really going that well, although he did start to um, get a few radio roles here and there because he had a good voice. 
But then his, um, one day his mother, who was a pretty hardcore alcoholic, and like I said, he was the only son, so they had always been close. She asked him for money, and he thought it was for alcohol. She went to the store and bought poison. She bought arsenic, came back, and in front of Alan, ate the arsenic and died in his arms. Now, by all accounts, Alan never got over this. He really never talked about his mother for the rest of his life to any of his friends or anything. And he always blamed himself because he gave her the money and he was there when it happened. Now, unfortunately, like I mentioned at the beginning of the vlog, he would go on later in life to have a lot of issues where he would also become an alcoholic and he would, some people say, uh, try to commit suicide and um, fortunately not accomplish it. Now, through all the hardship, Alan still owned this place. Like I said, he owned it for quite a few years. Not, a, not a, quite a few, but when you only live to be 50 years old, you know, five, six years is a big amount of time. Now, when his wife and he divorced, he couldn't really get anything else going as far as the acting. Ended up having to give up this place and got a job doing radio. Now, what was kind of serendipitous was that during that radio show he played a part where he played a man who was 18 years old the ages up till his death a former actress saw him well actually heard him on the radio was impressed by how much coverage he could do as far as an actor and went out to meet him she was an agent at that point she had transitioned from becoming an actress to an agent fell in love with Alan became his agent and they got married and lived pretty much together for the rest of their lives. Now we'll go a little bit more in depth into later times in Alan Ladd's life, but most people know Alan Ladd from Shane. He was, I mean, a great Western star. And like he would say in uh, various interviews, he would say, I'm the most insecure person or most insecure actor on the planet. He never could understand how he became a leading man. He never really understood what people saw in him, but he was eternally grateful for it. And um, even towards the end of his career, when people considered him to be washed up, he would be in a movie called The Carpetbaggers, and it would go on to be a success. Isn't that crazy to think of him being a lifeguard and wanting to train to be an Olympic athlete while he was working here, and then not too long after, he would end up renting out and having his own Tiny's patio here. Now I found an interview with one of his sons, with his second wife, and um, his son there said that, um, you know, like I said, he thought it was crazy that he would call this Tiny's Patio and he hated that name so much, that nickname, but that his dad would talk so much throughout his life about how much he loved this, owning this hamburger joint. It's pretty interesting to know that somebody who is once one of the biggest movie stars in the world from the 40s through the 50s, that this would be one of the places that brought him the most joy in his life. And that pretty much almost having to give this place up led to his success shortly thereafter in radio that also led to his success in film. And here you can see it's not a very big place and they just happen to be closed today. So maybe if we're in the area sometime we'll come back when they're open, but yeah, not a real big place. Now that stand was actually open for about 10 years. It was built 10 years before Alan ever took it over. Take a look, there's the pool. So assuming they didn't uh, redo it or anything like that, you can imagine him sitting in one of those lifeguard chairs. And from here, his little hamburger stand would have been right there. Now I swear to you, I have not even looked over here at this yet, and I've already noticed there's a picture of Alan Ladd right here. This is not how I found this. So it says, North Hollywood High School is right over here. It says, another student, Alan Ladd, climbed out of the Recreation Center swimming pool and into the movies. He was a star swimmer and diver at North Hollywood High School and performed in a water pageant in July 1933. A month later, he signed a film contract, although stardom proved to be some years away. Yeah, he suffered for like 10 years before his movie career really took off. Now, Ladd also earned his keep as a lifeguard at the rec 
recreation center's pool, like I said, where he swam, and playing on his nickname Tiny, he opened a burger joint across the street called Tiny's Patio. Holy moly, there you go. Now that is awesome. I had no idea that plaque was there. I'm so glad that that's there. It's really easy to miss because it's so far away from the pool, but I'm so glad that's there. That's awesome. Oh, that's great. I love that. I love that art. All right, let's get out of here. This train stop is a total nut house. I mean, as far as all the craziness at the top, it's a total nut house up there. Whoopsie, better reload. All right, let's try it again. Yes. And of course the nudie mural. I saw online that um, his granddaughter Jamie, who has like pretty much all of his stuff, she did one of those Leno, um, riding around in the car with Leno in one of the nudie's cars. I think it was the, uh, the one I took pictures of at the um, Valley Relics Museum, that station wagon nudie's wife's. Well, here's the woman that really changed Alan's life for the better, Sue Carroll Ladd. Sue Carroll was the actress turned agent that became the love of his life. And just a little further up the street here, well, actually a little further down the street, that's how I always get to the airport, is Alan Ladd's star. Let's go take a look. Well, here it is. Alan's permanent status here on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Your contribution to film will never be forgotten now. Now let's head over to my Trader Joe's and get some juice. I always love the decorations here. Classic. Did you miss me? I came home, had a package, and you were sitting right at the edge of your bed, staring at me, grinning and gritting your teeth. Did you miss me? You did? You did? Are you sure? I missed you too, bud. Yep, so that was my big purchase today. Veggie fries that are, I guess are basically like potato sticks or whatever. A green juice and another one of those uh, protein shakes. And I'm letting him try one of the little fries. He seems to like it. Hey, Ja, were those good? Did you like those? Well, don't get too used to them, okay? Well, inside the Amazon package was a gift. Oh, look at that. Not a gift for me. A gift for that Yahoo. Thank you, Dan Colinello. He's going to love these. He loves these. He eats these all the time. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I'm going to call it a night. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night. Goodbye. <laughs>